Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports News. I'm Joe Burke, and this is going to be a quick video on our Lehigh Valley Phantoms as we do the weekly check-in of the ghostly take as we look at the Phantoms after two very tough losses that, as Adam Johnson said in the post game to Sam Wismer, Christie, and I yesterday, that they hung them out to dry in back-to-back -back games pretty much <clears throat> in this one and in the first game. That was clearly the case as it was a sloppy game. Uh, through two periods in the game against the Springfield Thunderbirds, who, of course, trying to clinch home ice. They're actually a really good team in the Calder playoff. And it was sloppy through the first two. No team was really able to gather anything other than the Matthew Pekka wraparound goal, which wasn't a good job at protecting the net front and blocking a guy out and smashing him trying to come around the net. Um, I mean, call me old school, but you still got to be able to do that. And uh, the Phantoms had, did not do that there. Then in the third, it was just the floodgates open, only 59 seconds in. Uh, Todd and Alexandrov were able to get it to Brady Lyle. He was able to score. Wesley scored then four minutes in, only six. So basically six minutes into this period, the game went from being one nothing against the Thunderbirds to 4 nothing. So I think a big part of it is... You have a lot of these new kids in the lineup so much. We're lappy to me, and I said it in past videos, and um, I think grew as a coach throughout this year and started putting more characteristics to his system. And I don't know if he has a full-blown, uh, other than the push-it-north style, which I like, but a full-blown all cards figured out system yet but I think he's done a very fine job and I think he said all the right things and his bluntness I think is only going to help this team when he has bluntness in press conferences because it's going to show guys um that they're able to basically have to do these things in order to stick and he's just trying to help them out saying if you don't do these things you there's going to be other guys that come up and pass you by. And I think having a coach that's that blunt, Kirk McDonald has bluntness like that, but it really cares about the players. And I see the same thing in Lappy. Uh, he's just new and a new coach. It takes a bit to learn how to coach rather than just run a locker room. And I think he's really learning how to do that well. It's just you can't expect a lot from me when you have a bunch of these new guys coming in and Lappy's still trying to teach his system in his first year. It's kind of like a mixed bag for not finding a way when you have all of that happening in one. But I'm not making excuses. I'm just making observations, and that's kind of my observation. When you have guys that I think are going to be good, like Karinchek, like Riddell, like Colin Felix, I think all three of those defensemen could be potential starters for the Phantoms in the future. But this year, they're still trying to learn the system, and all three are in at the same time. So obviously, that contributes to hanging the goalie out to dry even more than the team has done throughout the course of this entire season because you have guys learning an entire system, and that's just natural. I don't blame any of the guys for that. I don't even blame the coaching staff for that. That's just natural when you have all that coming in and different kind of guys coming in, one going through one door up to Philly, going through another door down to uh, Lehigh, and some going down like McFadden was back to Reading because Lehigh was out of the playoffs. So you have all these different things, and... I think all of that plays into the factor of why the Phantoms didn't make the postseason, and that's a big part of it because of the cha the basically always changing lineup. Uh, Lappy even talked about it in the post game pressure with the injury and stuff. He can't really he hasn't he didn't even field a full lineup yesterday, and they still battled through the first period. I thought the first period of that game against the Cleveland Monsters was perfectly fine, and they were able to get the goal by Adam Johnson, assisted by Willman. Uh, Mullen had the goal that he was able to battle and get, get that goal, but it is what it is. A lot of the goals also th that you see are kind of easy fixes going into an offseason, at least my, not an easy fix, but a fix that I think Lappy could do, let me put it that way, and his coaching staff, because they're kind of just blocking out the net front. And I think once your defensemen kind of learn each other's grooves and have the best chemistry with each other because it's been a revolving door, basically... Um, I think you're going to have a bit, just naturally better chemistry in the front, and you're not going to have guys just be able to crash and continuously get rebound goals against the Phantoms like it's been this year. And that's basically why they lost against Cleveland. Uh, they hung Pat Nagel at the dry, like Adam Johnson said, but Nagel would make a great first save that it, even if they still shouldn't have allowed that great first shot, they could have still cleared it out and not allowed a second. Where the problem was, they kept allowing that second wave as well, and that's what would put them into a struggle bunny position. And the Phantoms, for me, are a team that I think, and I tweeted this yesterday uh, at JJBorick26 on Twitter, um, that it's a 
they're a team that I think is building in the right direction. I think Lappy had them starting to build in the right direction. I'm seeing things like Ratcliffe up on his case. I'm seeing Strom have his best season in, um, of his career, which is fantastic to see. You're seeing Sandine come in and putting him in the high slot. I think you're using guys very well. It's just when you don't have, one, the leg strength because of the quick succession of games that Kirk McDonald, even at the ECHL level, talked about that. Lappy goes at the AHL level as well because the league had to jam in these games. That factors in. But also, when you have a bunch of guys coming in that are playing so many games so many days, like Karinchik, you don't do that in college. So he's also getting used to playing that many games in that many days, and that's a huge thing to get used to as well. So I think all those factors and the slow start the first two months are the biggest reason uh, the Phantoms did not make the playoffs. I think if they had a better start in the first two months, which again, going back to it, hindsight's twenty twenty. what I said then um, was more critical, but now I realize it, it, it was more... You're learning a new system. You have all these guys learning a new system. You have the craziness of getting rid of the head coach at the top and then not knowing how that affects the bottom. So all these things put together, I think, just kind of set up the Phantoms in a bad position this year that there's not much that my conclusion of the season, like Lappy grew throughout the season, but there's not much he really could have done to continue to push them from 8th to 6th when you kept having manpower loss games like the Vegas Golden Knights equivalent of the NHL, basically. And uh, you keep having new guys come in when you ha- you're just having these guys learn your system. So I think all that compounded. It was actually a, s- a season that I think showed some bright spots in the second half, even through all the kind of ugly games. There's been bright spots like Ratcliffe moving in the right direction. I think Ratcliffe's going to make the team out of the gate next year. Um, not the Phantoms, obviously. I'm talking about the Flyers. Uh, you have Sandine, who's coming back, where Lappy said it uh, to Bob Rotruck when I was listening on AHL TV on the great interviews he does with uh, Coach and everybody else, Rotruck, that it was basically these guys just have to learn how to more play within themselves and not get themselves injured because they go almost, quote-unquote, too hard, uh, like the Sandines and Allisons of the world. you got to be able to kind of, like, balance yourself out, I guess is a right way to put it. And I think Allison's even though he still has that heart no down play style, has been doing a better job at making sure he doesn't get himself in the big hits that he ends up flipping over the boards that you would see sometimes and doing all that craziness better. And Sandine seems to be, because of the wits and smarts, uh, Lappy compared to like an AHL Limblum because they're both just very intelligent players. They don't have the silkiest Mitch skill, but they're just very intelligent players. Uh, I think those guys... So obviously Allison is going to make the roster next year. But I think Sandine, if he sticks around and believes in Lappy and the organization, which I don't see why he um, wouldn't believe in the Phantoms and their organization, um, I would say he could be a guy that's kind of a Dorcas guy to pay attention to for next year. I would say a guy, to wrap up these videos, because I'm trying to end in a positive, obviously, the Dorcas guy to pay attention to for next year is Matt Strom as well with the big jump he took. Uh, He played 3C and 4C for the Phantoms this year and did a very good job doing it. Um, he's not a guy, like Lappy said, that's ever going to be a great skater, but he's a smart player out there. He's really matured out there and learning how to use just his intelligence and anticipation factor because he's not the best skater at being able to jump plays and being able to box guys out, kind of almost like a basketball player sometimes being able to box guys off the puck. And I think Kirk McDonald really helped him in his development immensely. And then coming in and Ian LaPerriere continuing to learn how to grow the ropes. And also, I'm not surprised the young guys – like Strom uh, started showing strides under Lappy because Lappy was really good with the kids. And he was assistant coach of the Flyers. You would have the uh, pe- people say that. So I'm not surprised by that at all. I think it was more he just learned as a head coach this year how to balance where to play the veterans, where to give the kids more minutes, and where to do that. And that's just something in the like kind of the three-pronged process, I guess, or even more pronged process of learning how to coach that you just got to do. So I think this is just kind of a roundabout bump in the road season for the Phantoms because they also didn't have Forster. They also didn't have Wisdom. They also don't have Tamalo, who's back overseas. All three of those cats will likely be on the team next year, plus other influx of talent that you have coming from our potential prospect pool and undrafted free agents that you could still sign. So there's a bunch of different things here. That, that happened, and also, also the smaller depth-level contracts that you sign that become good uh, AHL players for you in the offseason as well. So there's multiple things that happen here, but I think with the influx of young talent they're going to have on the team next year, plus the fact that this team has looked better in the second half, minus this end stretch of games here where they've looked bad um, for the last two, 
the, the Phantoms have looked better in this end stretch of games here. They won, they beat Hershey. They barely lost to them in the first game of the back-to-back, -back, and that was in OT. They barely lost to Providence. They battled with Providence in an OT game. So the three games before this were honestly really solid, and then before that, they barely lost to Providence battling in an OT game too. So lately, they've been battling big time. It's just been these last two games that they haven't been able to muster the energy, and it's, the, it, it's just the way it is. I'm not making excuses. I'm just making observations but this has been the latest edition of the ghostly take as this was the weekly phantoms check-in as we checked in on the team after two downtrodden losses six to one to the cleveland monsters uh who were kind of right around them in the standings and then 5-0 to the springfield thunderbirds who are one of the top teams in the playoff race in the league so but again that game you still kind of thought even though the thunderbirds are top team it was there for the taking because it was an ugly first two anybody kind of could have stepped up in the third and ended up just being the thunderbirds that did it. But have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody. Please make sure to subscribe down below or up above on the easy to use widget to keep channel growing to 230 or more by the end of April. We appreciate you guys' love and support. Hope to see you at the Phantoms final game on Saturday. Peace out, everybody.